God bless you. Welcome to Grace Tabernacles Bible study. Listen, I want you to share this with as many people as you can. We are here in the sanctuary and we are experiencing some technical difficulties. And I'm hoping that you guys can hear me. Hope you can hear me and hope you can see me. I don't know if you can hear me better like this or better like this. But um, I want you to tune on in. Come on into Bible study. God has a word just for you. All right. Listen, share it. Share it with someone. Make sure you're on Bible study tonight. Again, we are experiencing technical difficulties, but the word of God is still going to go forth with power, with conviction. All right. Uh, if you can hear me, let me know. Good, good. I think y'all can hear me pretty good. I don't think I need the microphone because it might be too much of an echo. So we are here for Bible study. I want y'all to share this. God bless you. Sister Ali, Minister Morgan, bless you. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. It's good to be in Bible study. Listen, I want y'all to share it. Let the folks know we are here for Bible study. Tell everybody. Invite people over and come watch. God bless you, Minister Fisher. Bless you. Let's share this with everybody we know. Make sure you share it. Get the word out. We're getting a late start, but we're still here. We are still here. And I want you to share it with everybody, everybody. Amen. 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 All right, we're coming through pretty clear. God bless you, Sister Tasha. Let's share the Bible study. We're going to start with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for your presence. In this place, we thank you for your anointing that's saturated in the room. We pray right now that the same anointing that's here be everywhere that people are watching and viewing. I pray right now, God, that you have your way in the midst of this Bible study. We bind anything that's not like you. We bind anything that's contrary to the word of God. We bind all kinds of distractions and all kinds of evil doings. And God, I pray right now that you have your way to every phone, laptop, and tablet. Move through me, God, tonight. Even give me strength as I minister what you give, gave me to give to your people. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God and amen. Thank God and amen. Mama P, God bless you. My guy, Overseer Burton, all the way from Atlanta, God bless you. Listen, God gave me a word for the saints today, this evening, and um. Uh, pray my strength. I'll be traveling on tomorrow. Me and First Lady will be traveling to Memphis, Tennessee for our convocation. And uh, those of you that would like to sow a seed into our venture, to our holy convocation, you can do so at the end of the Bible study. But um, God has been really blessing through the word. And I'm excited about the word that God has been giving me lately. It, it has been uh, refreshing to be able to give the people of God the true word, to give the saints the true word of God. And it's easy, it's so easy to just uh, give any kind of word, but it, I, I love teaching the word of God. And, and I'm going to show you in the scriptures, uh, God bless you, Sister Wilma, Evangelist Wilma. I'm going to show you something in the scriptures because it, it, there are so many people who battle and deal with afflictions and sickness in their body. And I want to tell the people of God tonight that God desires for you to be in good health. He doesn't want us to be sick in our bodies. And, and sometimes we get to the point where, where maybe this affliction is God trying to teach me something? Maybe this affliction is God trying to 
warn me or trying to show me something. Maybe this affliction is God punishing me. And I'm going to show you in the word of God. There are some times where God will allow you to go through a trial or allow you to go through a tribulation uh, just to bring you out on victory side. So there are some times where we are afflicted for the glory of God. But then there are other times when we're aff we are afflicted and God wants us to be healed. And he gives us instructions on our healing in the word of God. He gives us instructions in our healing. When you are sick in your body, it's not time for you to stay home and wait to die. It's not time for you to sit down and, and not live anymore. When the doctor gives you a bad report, you cannot sit back and just let the bad report overtake your mind and overtake your body. Because some of us, we let the sickness don't even really kill us. It's not the sickness that killed us. It's the depression that we are getting ready to get out of it, that, that, we're, that we're sick. And the depression, thinking about the sickness, will kill you. The depression, thinking about your ailments, will kill you. And, and I'm going to show you in the word of God what God says about our healing. Somebody, I want you to write this in the comments. God wants me to be healed. I want you to write it in the comment. God wants me to be healed. And I'm going to go to James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Thank you, media team, for uh, putting the scriptures up and the giving information. Uh, James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. And it says this, is anyone among you sick? Let them call the elders of the church. To pray over them and anoint them with all you in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. So your sickness ain't always because you sinned. But if you have sinned, your sin will be forgiven. And he said, call for the elders to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. That's why it is important that the elders of the church keep clean hands. Oh, Lord, I, God, I love you. It is important that when you put this oil in your hand and you go to lay hands on somebody, that you have clean hands. Because if you're, to, if God told us in the scripture, I love you, Lord, that we are to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You can't have filthy hands and laying hands on folk because if you're laying on hands on folk and they're supposed to be healed when you lay hands, you can make them worse because whatever's not right in you can transfer to them on the altar. Or oh, I'm talking better than y'all saying amen. I ain't got much voice tonight. But if there's any sick among you, let the elders, bring them to the elders or send the elders so that they can lay hands and they shall recover. Send the elders and bring with them prayer oil. That's why this oil is important. This is not just ordinary oil, you know, that you cook with. I know some folks be saying, Bath, I need more oil. One lady, they come get oil every week. I'm like, Jesus, you must be cooking with it or something. But this is prayer oil, and it's not to be played with. My mom used to anoint me every morning with oil before I went to school. I said, I'm not sick, mom. Mother, I'm not sick. Well, this is to keep you from getting sick. This is to keep the bullets away from just straight bullets. East New York, they shooting all over the place. So I'm going to anoint you with this prayer oil. Amen? And even if you don't have the title of elder, Lord, I, I, I love you. When you are anointed to pray for someone, and God has anointed your hands, some of us have healing in our hands. Some of us have healing in our hands. You are to keep your hands clean. Touch not no 
filthy thing. Your hands have to be clean. Your life has to be pure because you never know who is going to need a healing from your hands. Amen. Let me keep going. Uh, let me go to Proverbs chapter 17, verse 22. God bless you, Sister Crystal. We love you here at Grace. Proverbs 17 and 22, and it says this. A cheerful heart <clears throat> is like good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. So when you're sick in your body, the last thing you need to do is be sick and mean. Oh, I'm going to say it for the folks in the balcony. I'm going to say it for the folks that just got here. If you're sick in your body and you want God to heal you, the last thing you need to be is sick and mean. You can't be sick and have a nasty attitude. If you're afflicted in your body, good God Almighty, your cheerfulness will heal you. Your joyfulness, you got to keep a smile on your face, even in your sickness. You got to keep joy in your spirit, even in your sickness. Because if you let that sickness break your spirit, then it saps your strength. And some of us have been sick and afflicted and it has taken our spirit. It has taken our joy. It has taken our love. It has taken our cheerfulness. And sooner or later... Because your sickness has taken your joy, sooner or later, it's going to take your life. Just because you afflicted don't mean you got to treat people all kinds of ways. Just because you're sick in your body don't mean, don't mean you got to look all kind, be mean to folks. You can smile your way to healing. You can laugh your way. Laughter is good for the soul. And some folks say, Pastor, you laugh so much. You, you play too much. You joke too much. Let me tell you something. You don't know the hell I've been through in the last 15 years dealing with loss and dealing with tragedy. Some things I got to smile my way through. Some things I got to laugh my way through. Because I'm not going to allow the stress of life to kill me. I'm going to smile on my way to heaven. Oh, Lord. I'm going to laugh on my way to heaven. I'm going to be joyful. And people, you see, people that are miserable, they don't want you to smile or laugh or anything. Be on my page and all, all kinds of stuff. You can smile and laugh your way to healing. Yes, you sick in your body. Still go to the concert and smile and have a good time. Yes, you sick in your body. Still go out to eat and act like you got a million dollars in your pocket. Yes, you sick in your body, but still go to the beach and run around with your bathing suit. Well, I don't know what you're going to have on. If you're sick in your body, it doesn't, it's not a death sentence. Smile your way. Be cheerful. Be cheerful. Watch a good movie. Go to the movie theater. Watch a comedy. You can't just let that sickness or that ailment or that stress. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. People of God, hear me and hear me good. Stress can turn into sickness. Stress. Worrying. You'll have a pain in your body that you don't know where it came from. What you've been worrying about. Stress. Will take you out of here. Stress will cause whatever sickness you got. To get even worse. That's why people. That are dealing with sicknesses. And dealing with ailments. I love it when I see uh, uh, people. That they may have cancer. They may have uh, high blood pressure. They may have lupus. Leukemia. Whatever they have. And they out there living their best life. You know why? Living their best life is keeping them alive. Keeping a smile on their face. And the people that are dying from these diseases and things, they don't have no joy in their life. You gotta, you got to still get up and go. You got to still keep a smile on your face. You got to still be loving and kind to everybody. And God will lengthen your years. Don't you let that sickness make you sit down in a corner and just wait, waiting to die. Well, I'm just going to wait to die. Loose here. The devil is a liar. God said live. I want you to write it in the comments. Say God said live. 
Don't you let this stress. The sickness is bad enough. Now you're going to be stressed over the sickness. Come on. The bills are bad enough. Now you're going to be stressed over the bills. And then in your stressing over the bills, now you get now you get high blood pressure. You can get a stroke. Because you stress. Now you, you, you open yourself up for all kinds of diseases and all kinds of things that come into your life. Be cheerful. Because the Bible says a cheerful heart is good medicine. I know you take your Tylenol. I know you got your Vicodin. I know you got your ibuprofen. Uh, 800 milligram. I got some right there they gave me for the condition that I'm dealing with right now. And I haven't even con disclosed my condition with my church because, uh, or everybody openly. Some folks may know because everybody ain't praying for you. But you better know this. Pastor Wright ain't gonna sit nowhere and just die. Pastor Wright ain't gonna still do what he does. I'm not gonna sit in the corner and just have a pity party. Whatever this is that I'm dealing with in my body, whatever this is, I'm going to praise my way through it. I'm going to pray my way through it. I'm going to laugh my way through it. You shouldn't even know when the saints are, go are going through because our posture doesn't change. We're still joyful. We're still cheerful. And I believe my cheerfulness is better than the medication that the, God, that the doctors gave me. God said live. Listen, let me keep going. Let me keep going. I hope I'm helping somebody. Somebody say, Pastor, you're helping me tonight. You're helping me. You're helping me. Listen, let's go to James. James chapter 5, verse 16. James chapter 5, verse 16. Watch this. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other. So that you may be healed. Do you hear what the word of God says? Confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of the righteous person has great power and produces wonderful results. Some say the fervent prayers of the righteous avail as much. That's where that scripture comes from. So in our... <clears throat> Fellowship in our confessing to one another. There's healing in that. Let me tell you what I'm talking Let me break it down for you. When you're able to sit with someone, with friends, with fellow brothers, fellow sisters, when you're able to sit with them and tell them some of the things that you've been holding in, that you've done, there is a release because some of us hold too much stuff. Some of us hold too much stuff and we need, we need to be able to surround ourselves with people we can tell things to that won't judge us, that won't turn on us, but there'll be a listening ear. And then in return, see, you can't have friends. God, I love you. Listen to me. You can't have friends that you are the only one that is getting poured on. You, you can't tell them anything about you, but they can tell you anything about them. So they leave refreshed. They leave healed. But you are now bound because you don't have the same kind of friendship that, they, that you're giving to them. So you leave holding your stuff in. You leave holding your stuff in and stressing yourself out, not able to eat, not able to sleep, look at get sickness getting on your body because you're holding so much stuff in. But the Bible says in James chapter 5, verse 16, this ain't just me making this up. The Bible says, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. Your healing is being able to talk to somebody about your mess. Oh boy. They can talk to you, but you can't talk to them. So when you're holding stuff in, that stuff stresses you out. 
That stuff literally can kill you. When you're holding stuff in, that stuff can literally take you out. So I just want you to, somebody just say, let it go, let it go. Let it go. You be depleted, Mama Connie. You be depleted. Because everybody's pouring on you. But you're not able to pour on nobody else. That's why the Bible says, confess it one to another. Let me give you another scripture. Third John. Chapter 1, verse 2. Third John, chapter 1, verse 2. Hallelujah. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health even as your soul prosper. God wants us to prosper and health and not just prosper and uh, uh, shouting and prosper spiritually, but he wants us to prosper in good health. Now, I know a lot of you are going to leave me right now. But if God wants us to prosper and be in good health, there are some things that we don't need to eat and partake in. If your sugar is already what it is, the Lord wants you to prosper and be in good health. You have to have the discipline. Ask God to discipline you. Oh, Lord. If your blood pressure is already what it is, you know that you ain't supposed to have no salt. You got gout and all these things. You ain't supposed to have salt in your diet. Don't tempt the Lord thy God and you're going to eat everything that you want to eat. Talk about the Lord wants me to prosper and be in good health. Part of that is in your mental. Part of that is knowing what you are not supposed to have and what you are not supposed to indulge in. We got to grow up as people of God and stop putting every and anything in our bodies. I should have left that alone. We got Thanksgiving coming up. And some folks can't wait. It's my favorite time of year. But I know if my doctor has told me that certain things are not good for me and God has instructed me to keep, he wants me in good health, there's some things that I can't overdo it with. Y'all can at least say amen. So he doesn't just want us because... And we see it a lot of times. I'm not coming for nobody. I love everybody. But he don't want us to be six, seven hundred pounds. Speaking in tongues. Got the Holy Ghost. Laying hands on everybody. Shouting all over the place. But we don't have no discipline in our health. We have no discipline in our health. Well, you, you know, uh, I'm, I got... Big bones. Bones don't weigh 700 pounds. I told y'all that before. So he doesn't want us to be so anointed in that area, but we're lacking in health. He wants us to prosper, even as our soul prosper, in good health, even as our soul prosper. Amen. Somebody just say, help me, pastor. Help me, help me. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be anointed. He wants you to go to higher levels in him. He wants you to go to higher levels in God. He wants all that. But he also wants you to be healthy. And we lose too many great men of God because they got they are anointed. They can preach, but they have not learned how to discipline themselves in their health. All right, we got to get ready to get out of here. Let's go to Isaiah. Chapter 53 at verse number 5. Isaiah 53. If you're with me, give me some thumbs up. 
Isaiah 53 and 5. And this is one of my favorite scriptures. Bless you, Elder Peter. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, we are healed. Let me tell you something. Jesus died. So we can be healed. When we walk around and we stay in our sicknesses and we don't allow healing to take place, we're doing him a disservice. I'm telling you right now, he died for cancer. He can heal it. He died for sugar diabetes. He can heal it. He died for your ailments, for headaches and all of these aneurysms. He can heal it. And if he doesn't heal it. He'll give you the strength to live with it. Whatever God does not heal, he gives you strength to deal with it and live with it. That's why there are some of us that are living with what other people have died with. And we still got a smile on our face. By his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes, we are healed. So healing is here for you right now. Deliverance is here for you right now. And you can be healed. You will be healed. You don't have to stay sick. You don't have to stay bound by sickness. The devil is a liar. I decree and declare that you are healed right now in the name of Jesus, I just want somebody to say it right now, and, and, and I, I know we're not in the sanctuary, but I just want you to say, I am healed. I am healed. I want you to open your mouth and say, I am healed. I am healed. Listen, I want to pray. I want to pray. Because I just feel that there's some that are afflicted and sick among us. I want you to know that God does not want you to stay in your sickness. I'm going to pray right now that whatever pain is in your body, there is power for healing, even through this atmosphere, even through the phone. If you're home, I just want you to lift your hands. If you're driving, I just want you to pull over on the side of the road. If you're at your job, just tune in for a little while. I speak healing right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, as I take this oil and I lay hands on myself, I'm laying hands on that brother. I'm laying hands on that sister. I'm laying hands on that mother, on that father, on that son, and on that daughter. I speak healing to their bodies right now. Someone has a pain in their side. Heal it, Lord. Someone has pain in their mind. Heal it, Lord. Someone has pain in their heart. Somebody has dealing with a lower back pain, upper back pain. I speak healing to your body right now. In the name of Jesus, I bind this sickness right now. Sickness come out of that body right now. Anxiety come out of that body right now. Affliction come out of that body right now. Devil, you are still a liar and you have no victory here. You have no place in this body. I cast you out and cast you back to the pits of hell to where you belong. That demon of cancer that is trying to sneak in and overtake your body. I cancel the assignment right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. The stress that has us growing gray hair. That has us sleepless nights. I bind it in the name of Jesus. Let not your heart be troubled. Be anxious for nothing. God said. With his stripes, we are healed. And if you believe that prayer, I just need everybody to give God the best prayer you can give him right now. Thank you, Lord.
God, I thank you for my healing. Lord, I thank you for my healing. Yes, Lord. I love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We give your name the glory. We give your name the praise. We give your name the honor. Listen, very quickly, 